I can only hope Mona finds my bizarre looks more appealing. This is probably all I have left, if even that, over Griffin, Ray, seriously, help me. I look back at the furry bundle, and it moves slightly to bare its teeth. I give him an exasperated look, and he shifts into his beast form. What do you want? He looks at me in frustration. You know there is nothing either of us can do. His body continues to change into a human form, and I temporarily freeze to watch him. His curious method of shifting always manages to amaze me. He is the only werewolf I know of that can stop halfway between werewolf and human for a prolonged period of time. The incredible control he has fits in perfectly with his beast talent. Usually beast talents lose control over themselves when they shift, but Ray never loses his temper without a reason. I need a plan. A plan that can get us out of this cell. I start to pace back and forth along the bars. I need to save Mona, you guarantee getting Mona back. Jake shrugs, lounging in another corner of the cell. You know that. Just give up. He looks more worn out than the rest of us, with bags underneath his eyes and a dreary glare. He has also been the one most active in trying to think up a plan with me. I know he is pretty fond of Mona and loathes losing her like I do, but seems like he has finally faced the awful facts. Come on. Xavier, we both know brainstorming is not going to work very well. We have tried it for about a day and a half and my head is about to explode. Wes complains, lying on a wooden bench. I think we are all pretty much sick of each other by now. I am not asking you. We all know you aren't too much help. I snap back, leaning my head against the bars. The golden airhead in our group certainly fits the blonde jokes we throw at him every now and then. Ever since bonding, I at least gather satisfaction from the fact that she will feel some measure of regret if she casts me away. It hurts that it is turning out like this, but a sadistic part of me is happy that she now fully belongs to me. The council can tea separate our bond. All I need to do is somehow convince Mona that she needs me, and perhaps she can somehow convince the council to let me stay with her. That plan may be harder than I thought to achieve, considering that I am stuck down in the dungeon. It isn't that bad of a place, our cell having four beds and a decent bathroom. The floor and walls seems to be made of solid rock and the room is decorated sparsely. It reminds me of the hotel we stayed at, except the doors have bars. Ray, what have you been doing? Jake asks Ray while he surveys a small hole in the wall. Have you been trying to drill through the walls, you have any better suggestions? He asks in response, and then shows all of us a thin, sharp nail. I found this stuck in the wall yesterday, like that will do any good. I mutter, falling onto my hard bed and staring at the ceiling. I miss her. I miss her more than I would ever be willing to admit. Hey. I did manage to make a few holes in the wall. Ray protests, showing us the dot-sized pinpricks scattered in one brick. I was hoping to loosen this brick and then work my way back. Surely we could get to the wall from here and then fight our way out, I narrow my eyes at the holes. That d-o-e-s-n-t even look like it goes through the entire brick. You may have made it halfway, I am working on it. He huffs, and I laugh. How long are you planning on doing that? A year. Wes jokingly asks. Ray blushes, although it is hard to tell because he is shifting at the same time. Obviously he is done talking to us. Ray, now a gigantic wolf, continues to hold the nail in his teeth and push it into the rock. I turn my head away from him in hopelessness. We are doomed. Once I think about it. Technically this is all Ray's fault. If he hadnt awakened her, we never would have gotten in this mess. Too delirious and angry to second-guess myself. I launch into a series of thoughts and accusations against Ray in my mind. I have nothing better to do. Just when I wonder how exactly I am going to murder Ray when we get out of here, a pair of footsteps interrupts my gleeful thinking. Intrigued, I turn to the man coming towards the bars. It doesn't take long for me to turn back away in disgust. Griffin doesn't smile as he steps up to the bars, inches from my face. As I try to stay calm. I notice that today he looks like a phoenix bright with the emotion of either fury or excitement with his red hair and animated expression. What are you doing here? Jake asks resignedly after I refuse to address Griffin, come here to gloat, well. 
I was supposed to come down here to inform you all that you will be either exiled or exterminated this Saturday, but I am sure that is a little bit depressing for all of you at the moment so I will try to start out with some good news, we all look at him dryly as he makes a big show out of trying to think of something. Yeah. Yeah we get it. I huff, nothing good for us delinquents. I mean, we only found the human destined to save our entire werewolf race and basically delivered her into your greedy hands, now, now, not so fast. He laughs. You seem to forget that you actually were trying to keep her away from us when we caught you, only because we were afraid of something like this happening to us, look, Don T get angry at me. I am only the messenger. He cautions, taking a step back from the bars as my face grows red. It s Mona. It s all because of her. You can blame her for all the problems you get into from now on, you know I can t do that. I shake my head, looking at the floor. Somewhat subduing myself. I look up at him. What do you stand to gain from all this? Well, the council says they will give me back my birthright if Mona agrees to stay at headquarters. As if she has a choice. He pauses, looking right into my eyes. But I don't t care about that. That is not what is important to me, what is important to you. Griffin, all four of us nail him with an iron gaze. He seems to be growing a bit uncomfortable, squirming slightly. Her, he nearly chokes, before straightening and trying to eye us coldly. Everything about her I want to myself. I do have selfish motives, but are they truly different from yours? All I want is to protect her and love her as a mate should. He is right. I am really no different than him. Why am I acting all high and mighty? He steps closer to the bars, closer to my face. Xavier. I don't t hate you. I am actually grateful to you for the love and kindness you gave her, because even though she doesn't admit it, she has certainly been affected for the better. You also saved her life several times, from what I have heard, and that makes me respect you more than anyone else at headquarters. I know you re a good guy. Maybe a little resentful but I would be too in your position. Please believe me try to understand, then surely, if you really felt that way, you would get us out of here. I say, basically flabbergasted by his confession. It certainly seemed like he hated me. The strangest thing of all is that I do understand. Though I don't t want to. Well, that is an interesting point. Why don't t I get you out of here? He laughs. If only it were that simple, sometimes, it is, first off. I don't t have the power to let you go. Secondly, even if I did let you go. I would be worried that you would go off and do something stupid. Just out of curiosity, what would you do if I got you out, save Mona, I say fiercely. I don't t like playing games. Yeah right. See, that qualifies as something stupid. It isnt in my best interest for you to do that, and once you think about it, it isnt in yours either. What are you going to do when you save Mona, Don T tell me what s in my best interest or not. I growl, and he takes another step back. Answer the question. Xavier. Don T be difficult, I suppose, run from you. And the rest of the council, I Don T really know what I would do. That s a thought-provoking question, which brings me back to the central question I asked myself a few minutes before. I start to drown in my doubt, struggling to stay above the water. You know you can t-run for long. And inwardly. You know Mona is safer here than she ever was with you, I feel as if I have been kicked in the gut. I want to shout at Griffin for saying such lies, but then I remember that I basically admitted the same things to myself earlier. I am not stupid, no matter how obstinate I want to remain at this point. You know, we Haven T even addressed Mona's feelings here. He says slowly, carefully. I never planned to get into this big discussion with you, but while we are here, might as well cover the most important issue here as well, I love her. And I know she feels at least a little love towards me in return, I know you do. But the problem here is not what you think. He nods his head slightly. She holds too much affection for you. You may have been better off if she hated your guts, my hands grip the bars, holding them so tightly that my knuckles turn stark white. What do you mean by that, the council is not going to let you live, you know. They absolutely cannot allow you to be with Mona. And this only makes things harder for her, how come, they need someone they can control. Xavier, and you are a very strong werewolf who has bended the rules time and time again without reaping the consequences. They are afraid of an uprising. If you were allowed to be with Mona, members of our community would start to look up to you, not the council. 
That was the first thing they realized while discussing this issue, for their minds are all focused on power. They wish to keep their power at any cost, I am nearly frozen with shock. I never thought myself to be a threat to the council. In fact, I never meant to break any of the rules in the first place. How could they possibly think I was trying to hoard Mona for some kind of rebellion? I am easier to control. Griffin says softly, looking at his feet. I am a shameful crossbreed who happens to be born in a position of power. They can rip away my status and give it back to me on a silver platter. I can t be much more of a puppet than I am now. Even my father thinks of me only as a tool to be used, yes. You do have a nice sob story. I get it. You are so unfortunate to be stuck with Mona. It is really quite a shame. But what about Mona? Griffin, I ask in frustration. Why is it harder for her? Well, think about it. The council is faced with quite the dilemma here. They can t just pry you two apart, because they know Mona will be seriously messed up as a result. They can t keep you two together, because of the reasons I mentioned earlier. It helps matters a little bit because I am also her mate, but doesn't eliminate the issue by far. She obviously likes you very much and makes this problem impossible to ignore. If only they had a way to make Mona forget all about you, to forget this whole escapade with your pack so she and I can be together, no Jake instantly says, snapping up from his seat. They won tea, they can tea. Wes protests almost in unison. Everyone turns to me to see my own reaction. Sharukan, I ask, my whole body trembling. They wouldn't tea dare. They will with or without Mona's permission. They are making it seem like she has a choice, but she really doesn't, I am about to explode with anger. They seriously are not going to do this to me. To us, but anyway, we are getting off topic. What I wanted to tell you was that you need to accept it and move on. It will make everything better for the two of you. Just try to forget about each other, that's impossible. You know I, I know. I probably understand you more than anyone. Griffin looks straight at me, stepping so close that I can feel each strained breath. I hate this. I hate having to say this to you, silence echoes through the hall as I stare at him in disbelief. Maybe, if you wish, the council could perform the ritual upon you as well, no. No. I cool dnt. I fiercely turn away. I never want to forget her, that's what I thought. Griffin smiles slightly, almost wistfully, in satisfaction. I like you. Xavier. You are the sort of wolf I aspire to be like, I don't tea like you. I snap, though inwardly wondering at the lack of arrogance on his face. He won. He gets her for the rest of eternity. How come he is acting so nice to me? Try to think of it this way. The council consists of arrogant, greedy werewolves, but they do have some basis in morality. Mona isnt going to live a life of servitude. She will have all the riches she could ever desire, as well as extraordinary honors and privileges. In addition, she will be trained in her spear abilities to fulfill the prophecy and our race's destiny. What more could you want for her, happiness? I wish for her to be happy, I ll do my best. I can t guarantee that she will be, but I promise I will try to make her the happiest woman in the world. All of us almost laugh at Griffin's expression, full of intensity and fervor. If you can make her happy, by all means do it. I choke softly, my face twisted with hidden mirth. He glares at me, obviously noticing our barely hidden chuckles. Mona. Happy. What a joke. It's impossible. She isnt exactly easy to please, to say the least. Well, he looks at his watch awkwardly. Looks like I am needed in a few minutes in the meeting room. I'll come back later and tell you the verdict. They are trying to decide what their final proposition to Mona will be, I watch him start to walk away with a resignation that shocks me. Everything he said makes perfect sense. There is really no point in trying to save Mona. Griffin stops for a second, and then swivels around to face me. I am sorry. He whispers, then quickly retreats up the narrow stairs at the end of the hallway. Why did things have to end up like this? Now even a cowardly crossbreed is feeling pity towards me. I feel like the lowest of werewolves a criminal. Now that my fighting spirit has been sucked away. Nothing is left except a big, gaping hole in my heart. Hey. I finished another hole. Ray shouts, showing us proudly the new dot he had made. I shake my head in dismay. Xavier, what are you going to do? Jake asks me in low tones, the serious one of the bunch. 
He calmly takes in my misshapen appearance as a tear starts to fall slowly from my eye. Embarrassed. I brush it away. I don't know. Jake. I just don't know anymore. Mona seems to be getting along pretty well with Griffin, Ray comments obnoxiously. The others start to glare at him but he doesn't notice, delirious from the long hours in a dark cell. She seems like she will be fine here, seems so. I reluctantly admit, though anger is building within me. Ray is really getting on my nerves today. He always knows the best ways in which to annoy me. He seems to act like a real mate. Someone who is responsible and caring. I think you can rest easy. Xavier, and I wasnt. I exclaim, starting to shift into my wolf form. Wes and Jake start to laugh, for reasons unknown. This has happened so many times today. Uh do I have to answer that, I pounce on him mid-shift, biting his ear and clawing his fur. He yowls in pain as I start to draw blood. We growl at each other as he rips away and completes the shift, now a wolf that is larger than I the fight continues for several minutes, mostly consisting of risky moves and stupid decisions. I knew I shouldn't he have gone for his tail, and I did it anyway, leaving my back open for attack. I really need to brush up on fighting tactics in this form. Guys a familiar voice interrupts our tussle, and we instantly stop. A slinky form materializes outside of the cell, leaning against the back wall. Ye, we basically shout in unison. He looks around anxiously then turns back to us with one finger on his lips. I am here to bust you guys out of this cell. Dana yes posing as one of the maids here at headquarters but it won't last for long. She is getting so many wrinkles that she needs a trip to the laundromat, where have you been? I ask him, completely shifted back to human form. He smiles and winks. They never captured me at the mansion. Seems that they forgot I even belonged to the pack. Funny how much a stealth talent can manage, huh, how did you get in here? Jake queries. The front door. He winks. It is the greatest experience, walking around and not even having one cute girl wink at me. So liberating, I still don't get how you did it. That s impossible. They must have noticed you, details, details. We will get to them later. Yi yawns, and then pulls out a slender key. I got this from the red head that just left, Griffin. So you have been in here the whole time. I ask in annoyance. Why didn't you tell us, how much fun would that be? And it s only been a few minutes. He walked out. I walked in. And he had his key dangling from his belt loop as if he wanted it to be stolen. I could have sworn I saw him grin on the way out. That sly dog quite literally. I can t help but like him now. No matter how aggravated I am at my present situation. So like Jake asked, what are you going to do? Yi asks me slowly. Are you going to stay here and try to save Mona? Or are you going to leave with the rest of us, wait. All of you are going to leave. I turn and look at the other pack members. They all make weird expressions that I can t possibly decipher. We want to support you Xavier. But we all think it is a lost cause a lost cause that is going to get us all killed. Griffin explained the situation pretty well. Jake explains. He looks guilty as he should. I just can t. I whisper. I can t give up on her, I remain silent while Yi glides over to the door, placing a key in the lock. There is a click as it turns, and the bars are finally open. I am finally free. You have a choice. You can either come with us now, or you can stay here and fight for her. But I promise you if we leave, we are not coming back. This is your one and only chance, everyone stands and starts to exit the cell. Yi, however, comes in and sits by me on the wooden bench. He tries his best to look comforting, and fails miserably. I saw Mona in her room. She looked happy. I really do hate this for you. Xavier, but we will help in any way we can. If you truly want to fight. I am sure we can convince the others to try, I am barely listening to Yi, immersed in a tidal wave of memories. Mona's smiling face after I saved her in the forest, her adorable expression of annoyance that I had come to know so well her look of pure elation after the first kiss we shared. I can t bear this. I can t lose her. Mona grins at me as I give her steak. She yells at me in indignation after I kiss her cheek. And somewhere, in the back of my mind, she sleeps in Ray's arms, soaking wet in a large fountain. That s right I almost forgot about that incident. I was so keen on getting her back, so eager to get on her good side that the reason why I got mad at her slipped my mind. 
Even though I am not mad at her in the slightest now, the main message hits me like one of Ray's punches in the stomach. She doesn't need you. She doesn't need you like you need her. This is the final straw. I sever the last remaining bond with my emotions and stand up like a robot. I have no hard feelings towards her, but I have to let her go. She was never mine to begin with. No wonder she never felt the attachment I did. No wonder she never loved me in return. Even though Griffin said otherwise. She was never mine. The last tear I plan on shedding in a long time escapes my eye as I firmly take the first step outside of the cell door. It is over forever. I only wish I could say goodbye. Tilda Mona Tilda. I stare at Griffin in disbelief. What, he has gone. He disappeared from his cell a few days ago. We have been trying to find him and the rest of his pack, but they are nowhere to be found. Yi, your friend, is a very clever stealth talent. He must have helped them escape. He sees my tears before they start to fall and pulls me close. I am sorry Mona. I wish you didn't have to deal with this. You don't deserve it, I wanted to talk to him. I say, still frozen by the news Griffin delivered. I wanted to see him again, I know you did. He squeezes me tight, though careful to avoid touching my skin. The true impact of his words seems to hit me at this moment. He left me. He abandoned me. Pain blossoms in my chest, swallowing me entirely. Am I even a person anymore? What am I all I can see is pain hurt, sorrow, and betrayal. I should have run after him when he tried to leave last week. I should have held on to him and never let him go. And now he has gone. Leaving me with this awful disease that makes me feel such desire. I am choking from lack of air, for it feels like he has taken away my willingness to breathe along with my heart. It is strange to think that he has stolen my heart but in this state of insanity it is easier to believe. All I really know right now is that I need him, for reasons that are unclear. I need him like no one else I have ever met before. I hate this feeling of dependence, but it overtakes my body until it is impossible to deny. And now I can never see him again, feel his warm lips, or hear his musical laugh. I miss it all, every single obnoxious, insolent part of him that makes him so special. This pain. Please help me. I start to sob, hanging on to Griffin like I am never going to let go. I accidentally make contact with his skin, and the pain causes me to rip apart from him. I stumble across the floor, holding my arm where I had touched Griffin. A large red mark stretches across it. I can't deal with this anymore. I try to wait until the pain subsides, wait until I gain some semblance of sanity. I will do it. I choke, softly spitting out the cursed words. How I wish I didn't have to say them but I must escape. Do what? Griffin gently asks, his voice full of concern. It seems to be the tone of voice he always uses with me lately. Anything. Anything that gets rid of the pain. Sharukan. I think they called it, Mona, are you sure, I lean on the stone wall, not quite sure what is happening. I think the council has gathered around me from the sound of the heavy cloaks that are swishing across the floor. I know this is it. I can't take my words back. I think of Xavier, of the happy times we experienced together. Of the joyous feelings in my heart that I have anxiously tried to suppress. It all means so much to me. I don't want to lose it. But. I don't want to experience this. Nothing amounts to the anguish of having a heart ripped apart and left in pieces. I don't want to be hurt in this manner. I must become stronger. Yes, one's dream. Another's nightmare. I have honestly tried to change myself. It has been difficult, of course. I have been struggling to prevent myself from snapping at my teachers, but the way they chastise me about my lack of progress over the last few days has really gotten on my nerves. It isnt like I haven't been in the garden for countless hours, forcing my restless mind to meditate just like the rude spear master suggested. It isnt like I haven't been poring over the books on basic werewolf etiquette that Lady Miranda had commanded me to read. And most of all, it isnt like I haven't participated in the daily assignment of scouring the prophecy that I am supposed to be a crucial part of about a million times. I hate analysis class the most. That is the worst. I hate looking for things that just aren't there. I am not really sure what Mr. Vigilance is hoping I will find. 
He has told me to do everything, from sweeping my thumb over every letter in the original text to sleeping with a copy of the prophecy beneath my head. Supposedly I have been, as the old Baldi would say, blessed with a superior insight that could lead to a greater understanding concerning the details of my mission if applied in the correct manner. Or something like that. I stopped listening to him after the very first day. For that matter, I stopped listening to pretty much everybody. So it probably is my fault that I haven't learned anything of substance since I began these cursed tutoring sessions. I think my teachers Aaron T used to a student that just can T learn and progress, so that s why they are going crazy. I am sure to them I seem like a normal kid, with nothing to set me apart from anyone else. But honestly, I did try. I am still trying. It is just difficult when Mr. Vigilance is breathing over my neck, his angry face too close for comfort. Mona, do you even understand the point of this class? It is not all fun and games, you know, I sigh. Fingering the rugged parchment upon which is written that awful paragraph that supposedly defines my life. I never considered this class to be fun and games. Mr. Vigilance, that much was true. Very true. Then have you not been studying the document? Tell me at least one thing that you learned since yesterday. He twists around to the front of the table where I sit, glaring at me like a ferocious animal. Admittedly, Mr. Vigilance is rather handsome. Everyone around here pretty much is. I have almost gotten sick of the attractive facial features, the long, glowing hair, and the perfect bodies that surround me daily. It is as if each of us looks like a china doll, living in our own little world that is ethereal to me even now. Mr. Vigilance is probably one of the least handsome werewolves I have seen, with a light gray buzz cut, sharp, pointed looks, and an athletic body. His muscles are nothing compared to some of the frightening Hulk look-alikes prowling around the premises. I have seen a few that really put the green monster to shame. It is strange how my perception has changed over these last few days. Comparing men's muscles with such impartiality and indifference I must be going crazy. This place is a madhouse. Mr. Vigilance's green eyes glow as he joins me in surveying the document, mistaking my boredom for intense concentration. What do you see? Chosen one, he whispers, his voice tinged with barely contained excitement. I see paper. I decide to humor him, holding my hand above the document. At the movement, he nearly jumps up and down, frenzy with anticipation and excitement. I see, what is it? He asks, his eyes nearly popping out of their sockets. I never imagined that a werewolf could manage to make an unattractive face, but he just proved me wrong. I see a ghost. I hastily choke, scrambling for something enlightening to say. I said the same thing yesterday and today he will probably not be satisfied. I can tell by the way his eyes slightly dim as he looks straight at me. Surely there's more. He says, grasping the edges of the table. His knuckles turn white, and cracks start to blossom within the furniture. I look up at him with a pointed glare, and he seems to realize what he is doing. He releases the hold on the table and starts fiddling with his sleeves. There is a wolf. My eyes slip to a close, the exhaustion from the past few nights starting to get to me. For some reason, I have not gotten more than a few hours of frequently interrupted sleep since I decided to go through the stupid Sharukan ritual. Every time I try to rest, I am awakened by the same horrible nightmare. There is no escape. At least not for me. Even now, the familiar vision is appearing before my eyes. Dark foliage and towering trees surround my form as I suddenly am transported to a deep forest, with no way back. I look around, searching for someone. Anyone. However, the only things here to keep me company are the mosquitoes, spiders, and other disgusting bugs. For a minute. I observe one of the gigantic arachnids as it weaves a spectacular web a few feet away from my face. Of course, that doesn't last long. The emotion of hopelessness constricts my heart, my breathing heavy and forced. I feel lost. Completely alone and completely helpless. How am I supposed to take care of myself in such a dark, scary place? I don't even know if I can start a fire by myself, let alone gather food. I sit by the trunk of a tree for a short while, exhausted for no reason at all. Against my will, my eyes start to slip to a close, and everything becomes hazy. No. Not this time. I snap to attention, fighting the overwhelming fatigue. Shakily standing up. I edge over to the small cluster of bushes in front of me. 
I don't know how I knew. But as I plucked a small, purple berry from the bush. I just felt certain that this was exactly what I needed. I plopped one after the other into my mouth, savoring the sweetness for only seconds between bites. For some reason, I cannot stop eating them. My hands keep moving towards my face while filled with berries. They are strange, unfamiliar hands that are withered and worn. The tiredness comes again, and this time it is impossible to overcome. Sleep caresses my body, weaving his hands across my arms and legs until I am filled with him. Drunken with sleep. Get up. Keep fighting. The protest is squelched by sleep as he captures it between his fingertips, squeezing the words tightly until they cease to exist. Before long, he breathes lightly in my ear, his work completed. He has convinced my consciousness to take a stroll with him, leaving only my body behind. Somehow this feels so wrong. I float to my feet, staring at my forsaken body. After a few seconds of silence, I take a step closer to the body. An arm takes mine before I get any closer, and I drown in sleep's unwavering gaze. Swiveling me around on my heel.